Hello, everyone. My name is Pastor Reinhard Paulison, and I'm a pastor here at a church in Toronto called I Go Church, International Gospel Outreach. And the reason why I'm doing this video is because I would like to share some prophetic dreams that God has given me over the last 10 years. And I feel God is telling me that this is the time to release these dreams. And it's just like anything, you know, I ask you to judge these dreams. I ask you to, uh, you know, to wait for confirmation. Maybe this dream may be a confirmation to dreams that you've had or other people have had. But I feel the time is now. And as you know, the Bible tells us that God never does anything unless he first reveals it to his servants and prophets. I'm not saying I'm a prophet, but I do move in the prophetic drift. And I want to share these dreams with you so that, you know, you can be warned and prepare for the season that we're about to enter. You know, in a congregation, we truly believe in this, that every believer must learn to hear God's voice. So, so we are a very prophetic church. We focus a lot of time in spending, you know, reading and worshiping and, and just praying and listening to the Holy Spirit. So, and that's why I'm being led to do this now as the Holy Spirit puts this burden in my heart to share it so that people can be warned and prepared for what is coming. All right, so the first dream that I want to share with you is that I saw that um, in the month of March, the stock market here in Toronto would fall over uh, close to 7,000 points or 7,000 points. And as this would happen, I would have someone come to me and try to sell me candies and try to rip me off uh, by selling these candies for a, just uh, an exaggerated price. And I could see how this person was trying to rip me off. And I can tell you that when I had this dream, I didn't really understand what this meant until, again, I began to pray and then God showed me that, you know, this would happen this year. And I remember that this, this March, just at the beginning of the March, I, 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 I had an encounter uh, that changed a lot of things for me and that confirmed that this was the time and the season for these dreams to begin to take place. And I remember that I was praying one night and, and just at the beginning of March, and I felt this entity that came into the room, not, I guess, not an angel, but it was a demonic entity that came in. And it was as if the, the demon was telling me that I knew what was going to take place. And surely enough, I remember that when I, when I received this, when I had this encounter, I could sense that God was telling me, I want you to do an audio and send it to the congregation and tell them that the coronavirus was going to be used as a smokescreen as a decoy, as a distraction to bring down the economy. And that's exactly what's happened. You know, we, we've seen, if you've been following the news, you can see how, again, the coronavirus has been used to bring down the economy and to shut down businesses and to keep everyone, you know, uh, at home, um, you know, and, and people's livelihoods to be taken away, the looting that has been taking place, people's uh, businesses being, you know, looted and destroyed and burned down. And that is exactly what is happening. And, and, I, and I said to people that this will be used as an excuse to bring down the economy, right? So I knew that we had entered into these time and seasons. And the fact that somebody was trying to sell me the candy, again, trying to deceive me or rip me off, was the fact that, again, the whole coronavirus was going to be used as a way to rip people off or to distract people or deceive people into you know ripping them off right so that's how i know we've entered this then i had another dream and this dream i was downtown here in toronto and i remember hearing this crash this huge bang or boom that shook the whole core of the downtown and i looked up and i saw this plane hit the cn tower and the plane had their engines blown out they were stalled with fire and as the plane hit i, I felt this shaking but I looked up and I saw there was a second plane in the same situation, the same circumstances, engines blown out, you know, engines stalling, uh, burning up, but the plane was bigger than the first one. And I remember saying to the people that I was with, I said, let's run to the north. And as we began to run to the north, I noticed that the women were wearing their leather boots. In other words, long leather boots up until, again, almost the knee. And here in Toronto, it's very common for women at the beginning of the fall to wear these boots, again, high heel leather boots all the way to the knees. And I sense that in my dream, the second plane would hit in a month, again, end of summer, which would be, again, end of September, or beginning of the fall, which is the month of October, right? But then I looked up and the, there was a third one coming. And then 
In my dream, I saw that we were already in the north, and I looked down to Toronto, and I could see the downtown core in commotion and chaos, and in that sense, there was a lot of fear, but yet I wasn't afraid. I could see how God was protecting me, God was taking care of us, and God was, you know, His Spirit was with all of us. So, why do I get out of these dreams? You know, this dream actually happened in 2009. And a couple of months after I had this dream, we had the stock market crash in the U.S. in 2009, which affected the whole world. And the Lord was telling me that the first plane was that of the 2009, uh, 2009 stock market crash that we took, we took place. But there would be a second crash that would take place again the end of summer or beginning of the fall, which makes it again end of September or October. God never told me what years, but I do feel that we've entered into this time and the season that these dreams are going to begin to take place and the time has come to act on these now, right? So the second play would hit in this time, which is roughly again the end of summer or beginning of the fall. And there would be a third one after that. I was not revealed what month the third plane would hit, but that the third plane would bring an even bigger crash than the second one and the first one which happened in 2009. So I believe we're living in those times now that we will begin to see another stock market crash again roughly in that, that time. Then I saw another dream. And in my dream, I saw that I was traveling down to Mexico. And I was, I was traveling down to Mexico. I saw there was this huge lineup and people were lining up to buy some some barbecue, you know, some, some again, some meat and, and it smelled very delicious. And as I began to approach the lineup, I began to ask people, what was it that they were going to buy? And they said, oh, we're going to buy this delicious plate of food. And I began to ask the cooks, you know, what is it that you guys put in this, uh, in this food and in this meat? What is it that you're doing? And they would grab the meat and throw it to the ground and, and mix it in with dust and all kinds of things. And it was all filthy. And then they would pick it up again and put it on the on the grill and then you know and they just grilled the meat and and people were just eating it up and lining up and paying big money for this for this plate i get on these this barbecue this meat and in my dream it was revealed to me that we would enter a season in which food will be scarce to the point that people will begin to eat rats dogs cats you know mules uh, and all kinds of animals because food will be scarce and those will be delicacies. In other words, only uh, people with a lot of money would actually be able to afford meat of, of such kind. You know, And this would happen in many third world countries, many developing countries. And I saw there would be you know, lack of food all over the world. Again, this is something that I want you to, to, to again, ask the Lord and confirm. And, and that's what we're seeing in some ways, what is taking place right now. Then I had another dream, September of 2016. And in this dream, I saw that the banks were trying to eliminate cash. And they were trying to incentivize people to put all their money into these high interest savings accounts. And uh, as people would put them into these savings accounts or high interest savings accounts, it would come up with all these clauses and conditions that would allow the banks to somehow hold the funds or use the funds to bail themselves out of, of just in case of any crash would happen of any you know um, danger or 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 drops or, or simply collapse of the banking system that's what i heard you know and and in my dream i was asking lord give me a confirmation and i remember the next day when i woke up um you know i went to my computer i checked my emails and the first email i get i get an email from a bank offering me a high interest savings account and I, I knew that this was a confirmation from god that the banks were trying to get people to do this and, and here in toronto here in canada that's exactly what happened since 2006 616 they've been offering these high interest savings accounts for everyone to put their money in there and again the intention for this is to to eliminate cash and to get the money from their clients to use it as a bailout you know when this again the banks uh, go bankrupt or crash now why am i saying this because again 2018 i had another dream and i saw myself in a big sky rise a big condo sky rise and i was looking out into the downtown core and i saw that the major banks you know the, the financial district here in toronto 
um, would collapse. I saw again the TD Bank, Scotia Bank, you know, a Bank of Montreal. They collapsed, and and I and I and I felt in my spirit, and I told everyone, it's time to get out, run, run, because this building is also going to collapse. And people began to run out. They didn't have time to. I told them, don't even grab your cell phone. Don't grab any clothing. Just run out. There's no time. So people began to run out. We ran out. And as, as soon as we step out of the building, the whole housing market in Toronto and Canada, and I sense also the world again, uh, fell and collapsed. You know, and in my dream, I saw that, you know, I, I knew this was going to happen. And yet it gave me enough time to go to a gas station and to fill my gas tank with gas and being prepared for the, what was actually happening. Because I knew that there would be also be, again, lack of, again, in this case, gasoline so people can move around. Also, in 2019, I had another dream and I saw Bitcoin, again, for those that follow cryptocurrencies, the Bitcoin would drop down to 5,600, then down to 3,200, and then eventually would bottom out at 1,700. For those that follow Bitcoin and follow cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin this year, when the coronavirus hit, again, dropped all the way down to 5,600. Right now, as I believe, it's 11,400, something like that. But I do believe, in this case, based on what God has shown me, that Bitcoin will also suffer other crashes that will bring it down to 32 and eventually bottom at 1700 Again, I'm just giving you these dreams. They're for you to, to judge, for you to ask and pray on the Lord. This is what I've seen. And, you know, some people may ask you, Reinhard, you know, why are you having all these uh, bad dreams about bad things that are happening? And I tell them, I feel that God is telling us to prepare and to prepare in many different ways. And one thing is that I tell people, God is telling us that we need to prepare by storing food. And that it's necessary for people to store a month or up to two months of food and water so that you can survive without having to go to the grocery stores. And I'm telling people, over the last five years, I've been telling people, store food, store water. Make sure you're sustainable. Make sure you're not dependable on the, on, on when it comes to, again, having to go buy food outside. Also, I've been telling people, it's, it's good to take some money. I'm not asking, telling people to take all their money out of the banking system, but take some money and have it cash in your home. Why is this important? If the banks collapse, as I saw in my dream, they're going to try to use the, 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 the client's money to bail themselves out. The government is not going to bail them out. This time, if they have actually permission from the government to bail themselves out, how? By grabbing the money or holding the funds from their own clients to try to save themselves, but it will not be enough. I saw literally, again, the banking system collapse here in Canada. And I can tell you that, you know what, most likely will happen also in the U.S. and the world. I, I pray that it doesn't. I pray that most of these things won't happen. But as a Canadian, I'm giving you my Canadian perspective. These dreams, I saw things happen here in Canada. But based on how things are in the world, I can tell you that most likely and, and, and very likely, they will take place also in the U.S. and maybe in many countries around the world. So I'm telling people, prepare with food, take some money out, have some cash in hand, you know, um, prepare spiritually, fill yourself with the Holy Spirit, you know, fill your lamps with oil, learn to hear God's voice, you know, drop down all the distractions in your life, focus on seeking the Lord, focus on hearing His voice, try to see what's happening, look at the signs that are that are, that are happening out there that indicates that we've entered into another time, the time of the beginning of birth pains, and God is, is trying to wake up His church to become those warriors, to become those, those fighters, you know, those spiritual uh, warriors that He wants us to be on guard and to look out for the evil that is unfolding before our eyes, you know, and that's what I said, but in the midst of all this, I also had other dreams that were very encouraging. And in these dreams, I saw that revival was coming. I saw that the revival would come and it would start on the streets. It would not be starting inside church buildings, but rather on the streets. I saw people being healed on the streets, people receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, receiving Jesus. And from the moment they received Jesus, they would just go lay hands on somebody that was sick and that person would get healed. And I saw just multitudes of people just, you know, again, being touched by the Holy Spirit on the streets, you know, 
the young, the old, uh, you know, the children, everybody was being, and I, and I believe that that is coming. We're going to begin to see a move of the Holy Spirit of God so tremendous that it will start on the streets, it will not start in the churches, and then it will seep into the churches. And that's what I saw. I also saw that, um, you know, uh, there would be many preachers that would begin to preach on the streets, that would stand at City Hall, government buildings, Main Street Avenues, and they would begin to preach, and people would literally fall on their, on their knees in repentance, crying out, mourning, and saying, we want the Jesus that you're preaching. And the power of the Holy Spirit, the conviction of sin that would come upon the people was so great that it would draw people to fall on their knees and to cry and to repent to God. And this would take place. I saw this taking place, you know? And, 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 I, and I could see how God would begin to not only... You know, draw people to repentance everywhere on the streets. I saw preachers going everywhere preaching the word of God. I saw again revival taking place on the streets everywhere outdoors. Thousands and you know thousands of people coming to the Lord. And I could see that in the midst of all this chaos, we will begin to see such a great move of God. You know, and for you that are listening, for you that are watching this video. I want you to know this, that God wants us to, to prepare. And how do I prepare for all this? Well, I just explained a few of the ways that we can prepare physically by storing food, by having some money, some cash in hand. Also spiritually by you know seeking the Lord, pressing on, developing a discipline when it comes to seeking God with your family. you know. But as all this would happen, I also too saw that there would be martial law implemented. And that with the martial law would implement, I remember in my dream, I saw the, you know, the, the soldiers outside on the streets. There was a lot of looting in neighborhoods, in urban neighborhoods, you know, cars being burned, homes being burned, homes being looted. And I could sense, you know, there was persecution that would come. So when that martial law would be implemented, it would come along with persecution for the church, persecution for Christians. And I mean, in my dream, I would go hide in a school, you know. And I could see they were after me. They were after Christians. You know, so when you begin to see this martial law take place, that is a sign that it would also come with persecution for the church here in the Western world. So I say this to you so that your faith can be strengthened, so that you can focus on seeking the Lord and asking God, what is it that you need to be doing in this time, in this season? You know, I share the dreams with much fear and I ask you to judge them. I ask you to, you know what, in this case, wait for God to confirm them. Maybe I'm not the first one you hear say these sort of things. But I do believe that God wants you to prepare. To prepare and to warn others, to tell others, because there are some things that God will allow to happen to draw His church to Him, to draw people to Him, to purify His church. And I feel God is saying that He wants His church to prepare he wants his church to be sanctified. He wants his church to be transformed and is getting ready to launch his church into the greatest revival we've ever seen. But it is up to us to stand for what is right, to stand for what is truth, to stand up and to push evil back, to push darkness back. It is time for the church to wake up and to react. Amen. So I'll leave you with this. I, pr I pray that God blesses you. And if you feel, you know what, that this is speaking to your heart, share it. Share it with other people so that they can prepare. And I'm asking you, don't wait for September to prepare. Do it now. Do it now because nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Only God knows. Amen. God bless you. Take care. Until next time. Bye-bye.